Hello, my name is Kyle Olszewski, and today I'll be discussing various concepts, techniques, and approaches to the task of manipulating hair in natural images. Hair capture editing is a problem that was initially addressed using multi-view capture, which, while sufficient to acquire models for films and games, required cumbersome setups that couldn't really extend to images in the wild. Other recent approaches used opt various optimization techniques to acquire hair structure and appearance that could then be edited or manipulated in real images, which, um, while attaining fairly impressive results, were still somewhat limited in the overall complexity and flexibility of the edits they could support. Recent work on neural face synthesis and editing has achieved some fairly impressive results, though. You see some example results from unconditional full face synthesis, like from progressive GAN or style GAN here, as well as conditional approaches that can take some form of user input, such as segmentation masks or sketches, and synthesize or edit full face images. While the latter are fairly impressive and close to what we want, they're somewhat limited in the flexibility and quality of the uh, manipulations to complex structures such as hair that they support, which generally this means that hair requires several specific concerns that we will need to address separately from the rest of the face. So there are several key questions that we'll address here, one being how do we represent hair, in particular the structure and appearance. The second is, for these generative modeling techniques, what type of training data do we need? We'll see that both real and synthetic data can be useful when used appropriately. And finally, what types of manipulations can we support, such as example-based global replacement of the hairstyle, or performing local edits to the appearance and structure of the hair. For representation, in these works, we disentangle the appearance and structure of the hair. By appearance, we refer to the color of the hair as modified by the overall ambient lighting, and the structure can be represented as the overall orientation of the hair in a mask indicating its valid regions in the image. You can see examples of this here, with the image of the hair in a close-up showing its appearance on the left, and an orientation map color-coded as seen on the right. So in the following, we'll discuss three primary works that each differ in terms of what type of inputs and operations they allow on the part of the user, as well as what type of output domains they target. The first of these will be 3D example-based neural hair rendering for both images and videos. This is work that was presented at ECCV 2020 by Chai et al. Uh, with an approach known as neural hair rendering. So if you go back and consider the traditional graphics pipeline discussed earlier, this typically takes in a 3D hair model as seen on the left, uses the standard rendering pipeline with um, parameters describing the um, camera position, lighting conditions, and produces rendered output. While this is usually sufficient for fully synthetic scenes like ones seen in games and film, it's rather difficult to synthesize such hair in a way that's sufficient to allow for its compositing in real images. Now this work addresses that problem by taking a 3D hair model as input, as well as appearance features extracted from natural images, and applying neural rendering to create rendered output that's sufficient for compositing into real images. You can see an example of the overall goal here. So given a relatively low resolution polygon mesh seen on the top left, and an input face frame, you can essentially render the overall structure map for that hairstyle composited onto the image which then, in conjunction with uh, appearance features extracted from some exemplar, can be used to render the output. Now, an obvious issue you have to address here is the domain gap between the fake data and the real data. You can see that just rendering synthetic hairstyles on top of real images doesn't tend to look very real when compared to the various real hairstyles that they're trying to express. This work addresses that problem by using the rendered structure map in conjunction with examples from real images to produce high quality output that matches the overall structure of the example hairstyle along with the appearance from the real exemplar image in a way that's plausible and allows for high quality compositing into a real image. Here you can see the overall pipeline for unsupervised neural hair rendering. The 3D model on the top is rendered on top of an example image and passed into an encoder EF, which is then passed through a generator GF to produce the synthesized result on the far right. Likewise, the orientation data is extracted from real images and passed through a separate encoder, ER, which shares layers with EF to project both images into a shared latent space before being passed through a separate generator, GR, that produces images 
that are conditioned on appearance data extracted from another image. During inference, the 3D model seen on the bottom is rendered on top of an example image, and the appearance information extracted from a real exemplar image is used to generate the final result. And optional temporal smoothing is applied to maintain temporal consistency between adjacent images and video sequences. Here you see some results obtained from that approach. Given the input image on the right, the structure map rendered on top of the image, you can see the output. You can see output conditioned on that structure. You can also see examples on the right where the input is conditioned on the appearance of one image and the structure of another. Here you see example results on a video sequence, both with and without the optional temporal smoothing mentioned earlier. Given the input sequence on the top left and the appearance reference on the bottom left, the output is produced as seen. You can see how this allows for synthesizing a wide variety of hairstyles with differing structure and appearance based on the different input models provided and the appearance reference. You can also see how the temporal smoothing makes for more consistent renderings across subsequent frames of a video. Next, we'll discuss techniques for 2D example-based and manual input-based hair image editing. In particular, we'll discuss the work Michigan, Multi-Input Conditioned Hair Image Generation for Portrait Editing by Z. Townadal, presented in SIGGRAPH 2020. Now, as with the prior work, this work conditions the output hairstyle on the appearance and structure extracted from example data. However, in this case, it uses both real images for both the hairstyle appearance and structure. It also incorporates a shape mask that can be used to adjust the overall shape of the output hairstyle. The structure can also be edited to create local, to interactively create local edits corresponding to the user's desires. Here you see the overall pipeline for this approach. The different types of conditioning data are passed through separate layers, which are then combined with a backbone generator, which composites this data with the background as well maintaining true to the different types of conditioning, the shape, structure, and appearance that are specified by the user. Here you see the pipeline in somewhat more detail. You can see how the appearance and shape and structure conditioning data are passed in separate stages before being combined with the background condition in the backbone generator to produce the desired output. Interestingly, you can also see how the shape and structure conditioning can be adjusted by user edits to allow for local edits to the overall structure of the target hairstyle. Here we show example results for single attribute editing. Given the target image and the structure data seen on in the middle column on the left, you can create a hairstyle matching the overall appearance but with the structure extracted from this structure image. In the middle you see how the target image can be modified according to the appearance extracted from the image in the middle column. On the left, you can see how you can adjust the shape mask to adjust the overall shape of the target hairstyle while maintaining its overall appearance, other aspects of its appearance. Here you see several examples of multiple, multiple attribute editing, where you can adjust the appearance, the structure, and or the shape of the mask to create various different types of output. Here you see results from an interactive system built on this framework. In reference mode, the structure and appearance are provided by sample images. Note that as the either the structure or the appearance images are updated, the corresponding structure or appearance of the target hairstyle synthesized on the far right changes as well. Using different combinations of the appearance from different structure and appearance images, you can create a variety of different hairstyles and colors. Here you see the system running in interactive mode with the painting system. As the mask corresponding to the hair region is updated, or strokes are added to it to adjust the overall orientation of the hair within this mask, you can see how corresponding edits and updates are made to the resulting image on, seen on the far right. Next we'll discuss work on intuitive and interactive manual scalp and beard synthesis. In particular, we'll discuss the work Intuitive Interactive Beard and Hair Synthesis with Gendered Models, 
presented by Olszewski et al. in CVPR 2020. The overall goal of this work is similar to those mentioned earlier. However, this focuses on synthesizing complex beard structures on real images corresponding to fine-grained user input provided by novice users. You can see examples here where given the image on the left and the mask and strokes of varying shape and color provided by the user, we can synthesize the example images corresponding to those strokes seen in the middle and right. This shows the overall architecture used for this system. On the left, an input mask and guide strokes of varying color and shape are passed into a system which produces just the hair region corresponding to these. This output is then composited with a masked image of the target image in which this hair is to be synthesized and passed to a refinement network, which then refines the result as well as performs compositing into this image. One of the key problems this work addresses is the relative lack of large-scale training data, including facial hair and natural images with segmented facial hair regions, which are required for training such a framework. In particular, this work employs the use of a relatively small amount of such segmented real images, along with a large-scale synthetic database, to allow for attractively creating a wide variety of facial hairstyles and natural images. Given this data, the first stage of the network architecture shown earlier is first trained from scratch using the synthetic images. This stage is then refined with real images while being contrained in conjunction with a compositing and refinement network um, using the small scale real image data set. Thus, it's possible to train this framework using only approximately 1300 real images with almost 31,000 synthetic images rendered on a variety of lighting conditions with appearance and structure variations. This framework allows for obtaining a fast initial estimate of the target hairstyle. To do this, we, say we train the same framework as before, but with one minor alteration. The input guide strokes are replaced with a simple mask containing one color and the overall shape of the target hairstyle. This sacrifices control over the result, but allows for getting a coarse estimate by only specifying the shape and target color of the hairstyle. Using this, we can synthesize an initial coarse estimate, which can then be refined. By using our data generation framework to automatically extract a vector field and corresponding strokes from the synthesized result, we can extract the initial guide strokes from this course estimate, which can then be edited by the user to allow for further fine tuning before being passed to our final network for final network synthesis. Here you see example results from this fast initial estimate stage. Each time the user updates the shape or color of the mask, an image corresponding to these changes is synthesized, as seen on the right. Once the synthesis is performed, the corresponding guide strokes are extracted from this image and rendered on the left. These strokes can be adjusted by the user later to perform moderate or fine scale adjustment to the overall structure and appearance of the synthesized hairstyle. This framework also allows for intuitive editing operations beyond drawing individual strokes, such as editing the vector field describing the overall shape of the hairstyle seen in the picture, as seen here. Given two different vector fields, we can create two different sets of auto-generated strokes by integrating this field, and use that to synthesize hairstyles with the same overall color but different structures. Likewise, we can edit the color field while keeping the, ve the overall vector fields fixed to create hairstyles with the same overall structure but different colors, as seen on the bottom. Here you see an example of brush-based synthesis by editing the underlying vector field. Each time the user makes a brush stroke, the vector field is adjusted to correspond to the direction of said stroke. The guide strokes that are synthesized by integrating this vector field are then adjusted in the region affected by this change. Once this is done, the guide strokes are passed to the final network for further synthesis. You can see how as additional guide strokes or additional breast strokes are added, the guide strokes overall the hairstyle is changed, allowing for complete alteration to the overall structure of the corresponding hairstyle. Here you see the final stage in which refinement of the individual strokes is performed. The user can add or remove strokes of different colors and shapes to add de details corresponding to those changes. For example, here it adds a smooth transition 
between the underlying skin and the boundaries of the beard. While this requires making numerous individual changes, this allows for fine-tuning the results from the previous stages to obtain results much closer to the user's target. This work also provides a user study in which various novice users are rough, quickly shown how to use the system and then asked to replicate a target hairstyle on an example image. You can see several results from these novice users here. You can see that though they over, vary overall in their content, they all come fairly close to matching the overall depicted hairstyle and the target hairstyle, despite the relative lack of experience for the users with this system or with technical artistry in general. Finally, this work shows that the same networks can be used, the same approach can be used with the traditional scalp hair data set to do combined scalp and facial hair synthesis. You can see examples on the top row for different female hairstyles, and on the second through fourth rows, different male hairstyles with combined scalp and facial hair synthesis as seen on in the final column. In conclusion, these works demonstrate that high quality hair manipulation is possible in real images, with varying levels of user input, from simply providing structure and appearance guidance to providing low level edits to the overall structure appearance of hairstyles. We also see how real and synthetic data can be useful for training these systems and providing example-based synthesis. We also see how the interactive performance enabled by these systems in modern hardware allows for iterative and creative experimentation on the user's part, allowing for a wide, wide range of results in a relatively small time with little experience on the user's part. Thanks for watching.